So this whole Bobby Lee, George Janko situation is weird. I remember a year ago, a bunch of YouTubers were clowning on George. On episode 351 of the Impulsive Podcast, Bobby Lee made one single joke which completely wrecked the relationship between the three hosts, Logan, Mike, and most notably, George. He's not coming back? Uh-uh. Is he really mad? Is he really mad? Oh, I we know, had George. beef with a guy? I don't know. Yeah, oh, no, 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 I didn't do anything wrong. The episode began with Bobby taking a little jab at George by suggesting that Mike was cooler. You have everything. Cool friends. So you have, this, co you this. have cool friends like this guy? What about him? Ah. Yet things became a little more contentious when George took it from fun to borderline aggressive. Some people just don't like sucking dick. Now turn around and know the wisdom I give you. Whoa! Before displaying more arrogance just a few minutes later. How about you? Uh, first of all, what's my name? Sensing George's clear insecurity, Bobby began to roast George whenever he got the opportunity. You have a girlfriend? Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Is that your girlfriend? Without fame, you wouldn't get that. Although the ultimate roast would come after George went on a two and a half minute monologue about the struggles he faced in his life. And I don't mean this in a cocky way, but like, dude, this put me on a very strong map and it made a lot of my avenues blow up. So I'm it's very like blessed, that's... but I didn't know I was going to be here. So it's like me... that's. Are you done? <laughs> it was just a long monologue. He was just waiting. Was and, just... I was, and let me just say something. I loved what you were saying. It was very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I got what you're saying, and you really inspired me, George. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 can I say something? First of all, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not okay, touch my me. Bad, my bad. Yeah, we just need writers to edit that down. <laughs> Like if we had a staff of writers, they'd be like, yeah, we'll cut that, cut that. But I'm sorry. essentially, it was a really good model. Usually when I do my comedy, I don't have writers in the room. I actually write my own stuff. Okay, I can tell. I but um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should get a writer. But my point is... <laughs> For the rest of the podcast, George went into his own little world, except for when Bobby got his attention just so he could roast him again. All right, George. It's so sad. What I'm saying is, is that when you were talking, we were for that 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually leading George to walk off the podcast, get in an Uber and leave without saying goodbye. The episode received comments such as, it's impossible to call yourself a comedian if you can't handle being slaughtered by other comedians, especially the Captain Bob himself. George tells everyone he's going to be the best comedian alive, but he can't take a joke from the legendary Bobby Lee. It's like a badge of honor. How does he think most comedians communicate with each other? I've always thought George thinks he's funnier than he really is. And when people roast him, he gets super butthurt like this generation. If you're the type of person who gets defensive and feels like you always have to be in the right, you're probably better suited to a Facebook comment section and not a career on YouTube. George spent the rest of the podcast like a little girl pouting in the corner. I'm serious when I say his ego would not allow him to go on and he was making this shit awkward. And after Logan made a side comment about it, this dude just walks off the podcast and takes an Uber home. He, he is clocked out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, know, I know. George has been under a tremendous me, amount of abuse. No, no, George, George, George. no, no, stop, George. I want you over here with me. George. And now we're going to have to deal with the fallout Mike, Mike, of this Mike. episode for the Logan, next two Mike. months. And Logan's probably sitting there thinking, dude, you're supposed to be the comedian on this show. Stop being such a bitch and taking everything so personal when everyone is joking around. You try to have a heart to heart with a man who uses humor to guise every tragic event that's ever happened in his life. People know exactly who Bobby Lee is. It's well documented that he does this shit every time he goes on someone's podcast. And at the end of the day, it's really all for entertainment. I'm telling you guys, Bill Burr or Patrice O'Neill would have had him crying in the fetal position 10 minutes in. And honestly, Bobby really didn't even go that hard on him. He was really just trying to welcome him to the game. George should have really just roasted back, but instead he mustered up the comedy of a third grader. So here's the thing. If it was just him clowning on George, because he couldn't handle Bobby's jabs, I get that. You can only go off the information that is available to you. However, in a lot of videos covering this situation, they left out Bobby doing this. But smell my because I have no cologne here, but I spray the f*** on my Why? Maybe, Mike, you want to smell? I would. No, you are. Question. It would be him. It would be George. Yeah, yeah, George. It would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well that's why I wanted to smell. Or maybe like, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll know the smell, too. Biggest yeah, boner so, for some reason. Smell this part. <laughs> No, no, smell. You gotta smell no, it. I just walked it, bro. dude. I just walked. Dude, this is not gay. It's podcasting. It's for entertainment. It is, it's material. And in, and, and in improv, you never disagree. Okay. You always agree. It's yes, and because yes, that, and. yes, and and you ruin the moment if you don't do it. it. So you're gonna fucking smell my dick, okay. and it's not gay. Okay. It's material, George. Yeah, yeah. So here.
I'm sorry this is crossing the line, and the fact that so many commentators left this out to sell the narrative that George just couldn't handle Bobby's insults. This is embarrassing, because I'm sure a lot of the commentators are going to act blindsided, and that they never could have seen this coming, due to the fact that George is saying Bobby did even more creepy ass shit. But Logan Paul cut out those parts of the podcast, which wow, Logan Paul being a world class douchebag. I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Still, the evidence of Bobby being a creepy little fucker was there from the jump. Just admit you got it wrong or else you're no better than the people you criticize. Anyway, now because of this, there's been a bit of a reappraisal of Bobby. People looking at past events and saying this isn't just Bobby being wacky and playing a character. No, I think at this point we can just say Bobby is a creep. Can I say that on TV? I'm so Bobby, sorry. Let's talk about your hair. Can we talk about <laughs> what is it with the Addison Improv guys with the Courtney. comedians? The Addison Improv. I they don't know love what you. it is. No, you're beautiful too, but you're, you're over there. I'm sitting over here. Yeah. You're crazy. over there. I requested it. I called my agent. I want to let's sit, sit, sit next to you. Come you on, good to see you. Because you were on paternity oh. leave last night, right? <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I lived in oh Europe for a while, that's how we can. Nice. And I, I'm shaped like a scallop. <laughs> so I have to do what I can, you know what I mean? I'm like a fatter Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yes, uh, you know Bobby Lee from Mad TV, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And this weekend he'll be in the Chicago area at the Improv to make audiences laugh. It is uh, a friend of the show. <laughs> he can never quite get on this couch gracefully. Seen you in like five years. It's been more, it's been give less than five years. Give, give me a kiss real quick. Just give me, mm, just give me a kiss real quick. Hey, you you don't feel know. good? You want me to do it again? Hey. What am I, what, 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 what? Where are you going? Do not kiss going? my oh, ankle, right. oh, okay, my okay. ankle my bone. Bad. I swear to God, I'm never going to come back here, okay? Anyway, um, I have three cats and a dog, and um, God, those ankles are so appetizing. <laughs> oh my God, that's got really. I just want to. <laughs> So in gathering footage for this video, I came across a clip from his podcast that he can add to his resume of him being a creep. Like he'll f try and find any <clears throat> fight. For example, he defends pedophiles. He's like, pedophiles, <laughs> they have no rights. Like he always goes on about like how pe pedophiles have no rights and they're disrespected and mistreated. I, I, I'm gonna say this, and I, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Oh. All right, and you might have to edit this out, okay? Oh, God. So just, you know what I mean, but what the most infuriating TV show ever made was Catching a Predator. Mm, it's a great show. That's okay? a great point. Especially when a kid is 19 or 20 mm -hmm. and the girl is supposed to be 16. A four-year difference, <clears throat> right? First of all, somebody made the age 18. It doesn't say it in the Bible. Mm. Does it in the Bible say that, you know what I mean, a 20-year-old and a seventeen-year-old can't fuck. That's a U.S. government. You know, law. and um, but some, but yeah. a human but being, mm -hmm. some human being, a lawmaker, yeah. lawmaker mm -hmm. made it up. They yeah, decided because it, yeah. I, I almost feel like a sixteen-year-old in the United States is far less emotionally and mentally developed than a sixteen-year-old in other countries. I really, really do believe that. I think that they are stunted here. Yeah. Um. Just you know, we we rear them differently here because I mean, you're right. Like in the Philippines, nobody bats an eyelash when when a twenty-something-year-old dates a fifteen-year-old. I mean, sometimes that fifteen-year-old can really <laughs> hold her own. When I was twelve, I had an eighteen-year-old boyfriend, and I blew him. I didn't lose my virginity to him, but I blew him regularly. Jesus. And you know what? Yeah. And he used to finger blast me, and I didn't even have my period yet. Uh, he used to stick his. An and you know what? And he was fingers. He, in Fuck a little pussy. And yeah. he was a Fact. well. He's still a well-known businessman. Like he is a. He's a. He's a guy who. This is, I've never heard this before. This story before. <laughs> You've it's met really him. He. You know when we went to the. I fucking, I fucking met him. When he, <laughs> he, he, she didn't even the tell the you. Finger the finger blaster. He shook her hand. He shook, shook her hand. his finger blasting no, hands. He, wow. He picked us up from the airport. He picked us up <laughs> from the fucking airport. That. I remember him now. Do you remember what? his? We, wow. We used his van. We used his van. <laughs> You didn't. The guy that finger blasted my girlfriend when she was 12. You just learned this? I just learned that now. <laughs> wow. Why I met him. Okay, wow. Can we go back to why you hate catching a predator? Oh, yeah. Do you think it's entrapment or do you think well, it's... There's some entrapment there and it's also like... um, Okay, if you're a 40-year-old man, obviously, a 40-year-old man with a wife and kids and you're trying to get a 16-year-old girl... 
weird yeah. and but gross. But does that mean you deserve to be put on blast on a TV show? I don't know. Especially, Maybe. it's also, you know, it, it's not a court of law, the show. It's not. Right? Mm-hmm. So basically what they're doing is they're ruining a, somebody's life forever. Mm-hmm. It's TV. Mm-hmm. You know? So basically they have kids. They have, you know, a wife. Maybe he has a screw loose and he made a bad decision. I mean, it's fucked up, yes. Okay, mm-hmm. and it's illegal. All right, I get it. But I don't think that a 19 or 20-year-old boy, you know what I mean, who's trying to get a 17-year-old girl should be, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think, I don't think and there's the any only problem reason with that. He- So now while I don't have the most experience with Chris Hansen, I've seen a decent amount of clips of the show and heard people talking about it. And I only remember Chris going after older men. In any case, this is kind of the double-edged sword of podcasting. It's easy content, but you also have thousands of hours on you talking on the internet. And if you're a creep, it's an inevitability of you telling on yourself and revealing that you're a world-class turd.